Welcome to the winter 2019 edition of the Rushmore Council Arena magazine, featuring important information for the residents of Rushmore Borough. The Arena magazine is also available in other formats. If you have difficulties in receiving your copy of the Arena magazine, please call Jill Chisnell at Rushmore Borough Council on 01252 398 744. If you wish to contact Rushmore Borough Council about any other issues, the phone number is 01252 398 399 and the web address is www.rushmore.gov.uk. And this edition of the Arena magazine is brought to you by FATN Talking News for the Visually Impaired. And this is Tony Austin bringing you this copy. And with me reading are Mary Parrott. Hello. And Malcolm Ingalls. Hello. And our recording engineer is Charles Fernley. Hello. And we start with a message from Councillor David Clifford, leader of Rushmore Borough Council, who writes, Town centre regeneration has always been our number one priority, and this time of year is a good one to look ahead to some exciting developments for next year. On the surface, things may not appear to be happening for long periods, but our regeneration team is always working incredibly hard behind the scenes, and things are certainly moving. I'm delighted to reveal we are in discussion with the University of Creative Arts in Farnham to provide around 120 student apartments as part of Aldershot's Union Street Scheme, which will breathe new life into our town centre. Don't miss the chance to have your say on the scheme at two drop-in sessions in mid-January. As work starts, we know that there'll be a lot of change and disruption to businesses and to residents, and for that we can only apologise and ask for your patience. But we've planned for this and we'll do our best to keep everyone up to date as Aldershot's regeneration begins to gather pace. We'll do our best to support local retailers such as John Jerome, whose family has traded in the town for almost a hundred years. In Farnborough, our designers, LDA, are working on a master plan for the Civic Quarter, and there'll be a chance for everyone to give their views when the plans come forward next year. As usual, there's lots going on in our towns over the festive season. And if you haven't already got your tickets, make sure you don't miss out on the Prince's Hall's fantastic pantomime, Jack and the Beanstalk. And that only leaves me to wish all our lovely residents and their families very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Moving forward into 2020, Councillor Maurice Sheehan, Cabinet Member for Operational Services. My role in the Cabinet is to make sure that the services we deliver continue to be top quality and give good value for money for our residents, and I'm glad to see that we are keeping busy on that front. As David mentioned, we are about to begin the physical transformation of Union Street in Aldershot, and patience will be needed as we begin demolition work. Down the road at the railway station, things are literally on the move, as the landmark British Infantry Field Gun is set to take up its new home in Gun Hill, appropriately, as work on the forecourt begins. I'm delighted to see that we continue our work with partners to deliver some excellent festive events like the popular Carols in the Bandstand in Aldershot and sporting events such as the Farnborough Winter Half Marathon and 5K. Phase two of the new Southwood Country Park is set to open shortly, a project I'm personally very excited about. We still have plenty to do, but this is another important landmark for us so plenty to keep us going. Building on Aldershot's creative heritage. We're pleased to announce that we're in discussions with the University for the Creative Arts, UCA, to take part of the redevelopment scheme planned for Union Street in Aldershot Town Centre. The new scheme would provide around 120 student apartments, breathing new life into the town and offering new opportunities to boost the cultural and creative heritage that Aldershot already enjoys. 
The redevelopment is also likely to include commercial space on the ground floor and new homes above. One idea being considered is for a maker's yard, which could offer studio space and units for small creative businesses. You'll be able to see the initial plans and give your views at two drop-in sessions being organised for Thursday the 16th of January from 4pm to 8pm at the Prince's Hall and Saturday the 18th of January from 10am to 2pm at the Wellington Shopping Centre. If you can't make the sessions, you'll also be able to have a look at the proposals online. We'll advertise the details on our website, www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash Aldershot Regeneration, and that's all one word, from mid-January. If all goes according to plan, the Rushmore Development Partnership will submit a planning application in the spring, with building work start, set to start in the autumn. The partnership brings together the council and its development partner, Hill Investments, to push forward the regeneration of both our towns. We'll keep you informed as things progress, as we know that the redevelopment will bring a lot of change and disruption to the town over the next few years. While these re redevelopment plans are taking shape, we've been carrying out initial work to demolish a single-storey extension and goods reception building at the back of some of the shops in Union Street. This work is needed to give our contractors access to the back of 53 and 55 High Street, where urgent work is required because of concerns about the soundness of the building's internal structure. Demolishing the two structures allows the contractors to create a safer vehicle access to the site through the former Marks and Spencer's goods yard, keeping lorry movements and dust and dirt disruption to a minimum for the town centre. As part of this phase, you'll see scaffolding going up in part of the high street, and the pavement is likely to be narrowed in part. Overall, we expect this work to take up until around mid to late March, depending on the weather. A field gun that has stood near Aldershot's railway station for more than 20 years is set to get a new home. The British Infantry field gun, which was brought back from South Africa, will be relocating to the grassed area at the bottom of Gun Hill in the new year, as subject to planning permission, so that changes to the road layouts and forecourt at Aldershot Station can be made. It feels appropriate that the gun's new home will be Gun Hill, said John Trusler, the, our principal engineer. It's one of the main routes into the town centre and it's fantastic that visitors will still be able to see it. We've worked with the Friends of Aldershot Military Museum to decide on the best location and we hope that the field gun will eventually become part of an Aldershot Heritage Trail, he added. As part of the station project, the Council will also be working with the Aldershot Civic Society to commission a piece of public art for the forecourt at Aldershot Railway Station. And once we know more, we'll share the proposed artwork designs and involve local people in choosing the final piece. And for more information on the plans for Aldershot Railway Station, visit www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash Aldershot Railway Station. The new year will see the start of work to create a new heart for Farnborough on the Civic Quarter site. The initial work will see the early demolition of the former Ellis Hall Community Centre in Murden Avenue to help pave the way for the redevelopment of the wider site. The regeneration scheme is likely to see a mix of new homes, a hotel, offices, restaurants and cafes and shops on the Civic Quarter site. This week our Cabinet was also due to consider proposals for a new leisure centre which could include new 25-metre and 20-metre pools, a fitness suite, multi-purpose studio space, a spinning studio, 
physio rooms and sauna, as well as a cafe and children's soft play area. The Civic Quarter Scheme is being brought forward by the Rushmore Development Partnership, RDP, which brings together the Council and our development partner, Hill Investments. Early in the new year, you will see our demolition hoardings going up and the community centre car park closed. Both the library and the leisure centre will be open as normal during the work. A master plan for how the civic quarter could be shaped is being drawn up by the award-winning designers of the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park LDA design. You'll have the chance to see the initial proposals and to comment on them in the late spring before the RDP submits a planning application. At the moment, we think this will be in the late spring, early summer. More information is available at www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash Farnborough Civic Quarter, which is all one long word. Building a stronger sense of community. Thanks to everyone who joined us for the latest Heart of Farnborough group meeting. Around 30 of you came along for a lively meeting at the council offices to hear the latest updates on the civic quarter plans and to discuss how the group could get involved in building a stronger sense of community in Farnborough. Among the topics discussed were developing the town's leisure, heritage and cultural offer, working with businesses and events and activities. And the next meeting will be on Tuesday the 14th of January from 7pm to 9pm at the council offices and new members are welcome. And if you are community minded and would like to get involved, find out more at www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash heart of Farnborough. And that again is one word. Work to create a new link road aimed at reducing traffic delays in Invincible Road, Farnborough, is expected to start in early 2020. We've developed the new scheme with Hampshire County Council in response to the problems that motorists experience in that area, particularly on busy days. As the work won't get underway until the new year, we've once again put in place temporary traffic signals over Christmas to help reduce traffic delays. Councillor Martin Tennant, our Cabinet Member for Major Projects and Property, said it's taken uh, longer than we'd expected to secure the land, but we're now in a position to get started early next year. And once completed, the new road will provide a welcome relief to the congestion, which can be an issue on busy days. Meet Aldershot's retail legend. Meet John Jerome, MBE, and it is immediately obvious why the men's outfitters, Edward Jerome, has survived to become Aldershot's longest established retailer. And I have a lovely picture of this gentleman with a glass of wine in his hand. I also have a picture of him with two other people um, in uh, Air Force uniform of times past and he's on the front cover of this magazine as well. So he's well photographed. The shop was opened by John's grandfather in 1923 and has traded from its original premises in Wellington Street ever since. John's father, Edgar, wanted his son to train as an accountant. But despite having a love for figures and bookwork, retail was in John's blood, and on leaving school, he asked to join the family business. Edgar insisted that John first underwent training. So he joined Bentwell's in Kingston, where he spent two years working in each of the store's many departments and learning about English law, retail distribution and how to write a business letter. John worked briefly at Harvey's in Guildford before joining a menswear shop in Farnham. At the age of 21, John began his career at Edgar Jerome and has recently celebrated his 50th year in the business. John described how he has had a happy relationship with Aldershot. 
Being an independent retailer means you can stand and talk to your customers. Personal service is the reason I believe we're still here today. I've been known to go out and measure up customers who need a new shirt but are unable to come to the shop. It is also not unusual for me to take a telephone order and personally deliver the item later the same day. This is the meaning of retail. It is not just about taking money, he said. The fashions may have changed over the years, but from school uniform and day-to-day -day men's clothing to formal attire and higher wear, Edgar Jerome continues to cater for the clothing needs of its many loyal customers through face-to-face -face service and at www.edgarjerome.co.uk. And I'll finish this piece by describing another photograph of four gentlemen. The one in the front is uh, sporting his, I think it's a bowler hat, but he's got it in the air as if he's going to throw it. But, or it might be a light, I'm not quite sure. No, it is a hat. But anyway, in the family it says, left to right we have Fred, Edgar, John and Paul Jerome, who is son of Fred. Committee timetable. The public is welcome at all meetings which are held at the council offices and they usually start at 7pm. In January, the 7th, Cabinet, the 14th, Licensing Subcommittee, 15th, Development Management Committee, the 22nd, Policy and Project Advisory Board, the 27th, Licensing, Audit and General Purposes Committee, the 29th, Licensing Subcommittee for Alcohol and Entertainments, and on the 30th, Overview and Scrutiny Committee. In February, the 4th, Cabinet, 11th, Licensing Subcommittee, the 12th, Development Management Committee, 20, Full Council, and the 27th, Licensing Subcommittee, Alcohol and Entertainments. And then in March, on the 3rd, Cabinet, 10th, Licensing Subcommittee, 11th, Development Management Committee, on the 23rd, Licensing Audit and General Purposes Committee, the 24th, Licensing Subcommittee, Alcohol and Entertainments, 25th, Policy and Project Advisory Board, on the 26th, Overview and Scrutiny Committee, and on the 31st, another Cabinet meeting. And there's a website listing all these, www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash meetings calendar. The second phase of the New Southwood Country Park is set to open shortly, giving you another 27 hectares of fantastic natural green space to enjoy. The new space is on the eastern, the former clubhouse side of the park, and will include a new redesigned car park off Ivley Road. This follows the opening of around 30 hectares on the western side at the end of September, along with 2.4 kilometres circular walking route and a new 31-space car park in Kennels Lane. Hoardings went up around the clubhouse and bungalow building in mid-October as we explore the options for the buildings. The Country Park is suitable alternative natural green space, or SANG, for residents and dog walkers to enjoy and means that we can now move ahead with our town centre development plans. We're developing options for the Country Park to consult on in the new year. As well as a visitor centre, options could include a children's playground made from natural materials, dipping platforms and cycle paths, linking to long-distance walks along Cove Brook, the Basingstoke Canal, Wellesley Woodlands and the Blackwater Valley Path. A pedestrian crossing on Ivley Road is also planned.
And you can find more information about Southwood Country Park on our website, www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash Southwood Country Park. Eight-year-old Aldershot schoolgirl Florence Jones, who wrote us about tackling town centre litter, was our guest of honour when she was invited to take a tour of our rubbish and recycling depot. Florence, who attends Alderwood Junior School, dropped into the Circo Depot in Ashvale, along with grandparents Ken and Sue Gravenel, where she was met by the leader of Rushmore Borough Council, Councillor David Clifford. Also there to meet her were our Deputy Leader Councillor, Ken Muschamp, Executive Director, Karen Edwards, and Circo Interim Contracts Manager, Katie Bassett, who gave Florence and her grandparents a tour of the building, repair workshop and yard, after presenting Florence with her own named high-vis jacket. Katie explained to Florence what happens to the rubbish and recycling collected in the borough and how the streets are cleaned. Councillor Clifford said, We were really impressed with Florence's letter as it shows she cares about the place where she lives and wants people to look after it. Florence and her parents also joined us a couple of weeks later to turn on the Christmas lights in Aldershot, along with Father Christmas, the Mayor of Rushmore, Councillor Sue Carter, and special guests from the Prince's Hall pantomime, Jack and the Beanstalk. And I have a lovely photograph of Florence wearing her high-vis jacket with her name very clearly written on her back. Bin collection days will be changing over the Christmas and New Year holidays. And this is the only time of the year when this now happens. Our crews will be collecting as usual until Christmas Eve and will then start work again on Friday the 27th of December. After the holidays, collections are back to normal the week beginning the 13th of January. And uh, I'm going to give you a list in the minute of the changes. But if you want to check which bins will be emptying, please visit www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash bin collections and simply put in your postcode. And you can also download a copy of your bin collection calendar 2019 to 2020. The usual collection day of Christmas Day, the 25th, will be moved to Friday the 27th of December. Thursday the 26th of December will be moved to Saturday the 28th of December. Friday the 27th will be moved to Monday the 30th of December. The usual collection day of Monday the 30th of December will be revised to Tuesday the 31st of December. Tuesday 31st December will become Thursday the 2nd of January. Wednesday the 1st of January will move to Friday the 3rd of January. And Thursday the 2nd of January will become Saturday the 4th of January. Friday the 3rd of January will then be moved to Monday the 6th of January. The usual collection day of Monday the 6th of January will be revised to Tuesday the 7th of January. Tuesday the 7th of January becomes Wednesday the 8th. Wednesday the 8th of January is moved to Thursday the 9th. Thursday the 9th of January becomes Friday the 10th. And Friday the 10th of January is revised to Saturday the 11th of January. And then it's back to normal. After it proved such a big success last year, we'll once again be running a booking system to collect your real Christmas tree for recycling. And because it's so easy for people to forget uh, which day to leave their trees out, we asked residents for the first time last year to go online to www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash Christmas trees and book for their tree to be collected. 
and you responded fantastically well by recycling 2,073 trees weighing an impressive 41.5 tonnes for composting. It's so easy to sign up to the service. Once you put in your address details, we'll advise you of your collection date and send you an email to confirm it. The new booking system means we'll know exactly who needs their tree collecting for recycling and when, so we don't miss any. As always, collection is free, but please remove all decorations and make sure you cut your tree in half if it's bigger than five feet tall. If you have a disability or don't have access to the web, you can book a collection by calling our customer services team on 01252 398 399 during office hours. And make sure you sign up soon and let's recycle even more Christmas trees this year. When you raise a glass this festive season, don't forget to keep your glass bottles and jars separate from your other recycling. We collect it separately because if glass breaks while it is mixed with other items, it can contaminate the whole load. We estimate this costs us around £75,000 a year in wasted recycling. So by keeping glass separate in your blue box, we get better value for your recycling. There are also lots of other festive items that can be recycled. In your blue recycling bin, we welcome Christmas cards, except those with glitter, cardboard tubes from wrapping paper, or foil cling film, rinsed food and drinks cans, biscuit and cake tins, plastic bottles, newspapers, magazines, household paper. Please don't put the following in your blue recycling bin. Wrapping paper, as most contains plastic, foil or ribbon. Polystyrene packaging from gifts. Plastic bags and other plastic packaging. Clothing. Cardboard juice cartons. You can order a new or extra glass collection box at www rushmore.gov.uk forward slash glass recycling For more information on recycling visit www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash rubbish and recycling Remember a loved one Christmas is a time for celebration but for those who have lost a loved one the festive season can be a difficult time of year. From Saturday the 14th of December for the 19th year running, the team at Aldershot Crematorium invites you to visit and leave a personal message of remembrance on one of two memorial Christmas trees. The trees can be found in the Hall of Remembrance and the Waiting Conservatory so even when the Chapel and Hall of Remembrance are closed, you will still be able to leave a message. And we provide the cards and ribbons for free, and last year more than 3,000 messages were left. We even received cards from people who were not able to visit, but would still like their message to be added to the tree. The trees and messages will remain on display until Sunday the 5th of January. The crematorium grounds are open weekdays from 9am to 5pm and 10am to 4pm at weekends. And the Chapel Hall of Remembrance and Office are opening on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Friday the 27th of December, New Year's Day and weekends from 10am to midday. For all other days, the opening hours are Monday to Thursday Thursday at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Friday from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. and there's a photograph presumably last one of last year's trees and it really does look very colorful and obviously a, a fitting uh, way to remember lost ones and here are the <clears throat> Christmas and New Year opening times for council offices 
On <clears throat> Monday, the 23rd of December, open from 8.30 till 5. On Tuesday, the 24th of December, from 8.30 until 4. Then on Wednesday, the 25th, then Thursday, 26th, Friday, 27th, um, all those days it's closed. On Monday, the 30th, 8.30 till 5. On Tuesday, the 31st, it's 8.30 till 5. It's closed on Wednesday, the 1st of January. Then on Thursday, the 2nd of January, again, it's 8.30 till 5. And, but on Friday, the 3rd of January, it's just 8.30 until 4.30. And we'll be opening as normal from Thursday, the 2nd of January. And you can find details of many of our services on our website, www.rushmore.gov.uk, including checking your bin collection days and how to contact us in an emergency. Stay safe this Christmas. If you're out socialising over Christmas and New Year, the Safer North Hampshire team has the following tips to make sure you stay safe. Don't leave your bag unattended. Use table or bar hooks. Never leave a drink unattended. Plan how to get home and avoid walking alone. Save a local licensed taxi number in your phone. Don't use a taxi not displaying taxi license plates. Never drink so much alcohol that you endanger yourself. Don't drink and drive. Make other arrangements if you may be over the limit the next day. If you're away from home over the holidays, make sure you lock your windows and doors and leave a light on or use a timer switch. Lock side gates and padlock shed doors. Never leave valuables on display. Consider installing a home CCTV system to protect your property. For more information, visit www.safernh.co.uk We hope you have a great Christmas and a happy new year. As part of our annual parking offer to support our local traders over the Christmas season, there will be free parking in most council car parks in Aldershot, Farnborough and North Camp on Saturday and Sunday the 21st and 22nd of December. There will also be free parking once more at the Wellington Shopping Centre car park on the Sunday. The only council car parks not part of this offer are the Co-op and East Station Road car parks in Aldershot and Union Street East, Union Street West and Salisbury Road parking areas in Farnborough. The offer also does not cover on-street parking. And to liven up that report, there's a cartoon at the bottom showing a line of identical small little red cars in a line, but in the middle of the line is Santa in his sleigh ringing <laughs> his bell. Um, well, it's panto time. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> and there's a picture here to prove it of the full cast of Jack and the Beanstalk. And they say book early for this annual family treat so you can get the best seats at the best prices. And tickets range from £15 to £29. And we offer discounts for group bookings. Well, this year's magical pantomime is Jack and the Beanstalk, and it promises to be our most spectacular yet. Discover what happens when Jack sells the beloved family cow for magic beans, only for them to open up an unexpected, mysterious world way up in the clouds. Join Jack and his dotty mum, Dame Trot, as they scale the beanstalk and outwit the giant before finally being reunited with the love of Jack's life. As well as plenty of well-loved panto traditions, you can expect lots of non-stop high-energy family fun and the return of a wonderful cast. And look out for Robert Hopkins, who'll star in his 26th consecutive pantomime, and Donovan Christian Carey, who's back for the 16th year running. And if that's not enough to tempt you, 
We also promise fabulous sets, stunning costumes, fantastic dancers, a great script and excellent songs and music. Each performance is two and a half hours long and includes a 20-minute interval. Jack and the Beanstalk it runs until 31st of December and this year is supported by sponsorship from Enterprise Rent-A-Car and the Rock and Pop Foundation. Visit www.princeshall.com or call the box office on 01252 329155 to book or reserve your seats. Stage call for budding actors and dancers. If you've always had a desire to tread the boards, or the young person in your life is an aspiring actor or dancer, why not start 2020 by joining one of our regular classes? Acting for All is for people aged over 18 who want to learn more about the basics of acting and would like to build their confidence in a relaxed and supportive environment. Classes are on Tuesday evenings and the 10-week course costs £50. For youngsters aged 5 to 16 who enjoy performing and want to learn more about acting, our youth theatre could be just the ticket. Group sizes are limited to 18 students and the cost is £90 a term. Dance Club is for children aged 6 to 11 who love to dance. Dancers work on a number of routines and put on an end-of-term show for family and friends. The cost is £70 per term. The new term starts in the week beginning the 13th of January. For more information, visit www.princesshall.com. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas, and there's still plenty happening in Aldershot and Farnborough as we count down for the festivities. Take advantage of the free parking in our car parks to enjoy the town centre Christmas activities and support local business. Drop into the Wellington Shopping Centre on Aldershot on Saturday the 21st with the children to meet Santa and learn some Elfie skills that will help with his deliveries to good children around the world. The Enchanted Elf Workshop from 10am to 3pm offers elf activities including making magical reindeer food, decorating a Christmas bauble and adding your wish to the giant wish list. While you're in the town, make sure you join the Beanstalk Bauble Bonanza Trail around Aldershot Town Centre. Pick up a copy of the trail from the Elf Workshop, then go on a hunt for the ten giant tree baubles that our panto giant has lost in Aldershot Town Centre. And once you've found all ten, take your completed trail back to the workshop to collect your prize. In Farnborough, what better place to pick up a unique handcrafted gift than our Christmas craft fair in Queensmead from 9am to 4pm on Saturday the 21st, with live music by Cactus Brass, and if you need to do some last-minute Christmas shopping, pop into Princess Mead to hear the Salvation Army Band Choir and Timbrels playing daily until Christmas Eve. Plus, Prince's Mead will be hosting mulled wine and mince pies from 11am until stocks run out to warm you up. And guaranteed to get you into the festive spirit is the pop popular Carols in the Bandstand concert on Saturday from 5.30pm to 7pm in the Prince's Gardens Aldershot. Join the community, local choirs, and performers for a seasonal sing-along with free hot drinks and refreshments. Give yourself something to look forward to in the new year by booking tickets for the Westy Beer Festival. More than 50 varieties of ale and cider will be on offer, including award-winning favourites. No festival would be complete without music, so you can expect live music at all three festival sessions, and if you get a bit peckish, head to the food area 
and treat yourself to a delicious meal of pie, mash and liquor. The Westy Beer Festival takes place at the West End Centre in Aldershot on Friday the 10th of January from 7pm until 11pm and on Saturday the 11th of January from midday to 4pm. The festival will conclude on Saturday with uh, an evening session from 6pm to 11 now, tickets cost £6 to get in, plus £10 for six half-pint taster tokens. And additional tokens can be bought at the festival. And to book your tickets, you can call the West End Centre box office on 01252 or you can visit www westendcentre.co.uk And here are the What's On listings. Saturday the 21st of December Christmas Craft Fair Queensmead Farnborough 9 until 4 free. Saturday the 21st of December Carols in the Bandstand Prince's Gardens Aldershot 5.30pm free. Saturday the 4th of January and the first Saturday of every month, Storytime and Craft in Farnborough Library, 10.30 till 11.30 a.m., free. Tuesday the 7th of January and every week, Baby Rhyme Time in Aldershot Library, 10.30 till 11.45 a.m., free. Friday the 10th of January and Saturday the 11th of January, Westy Beer Festival, West End Centre, from £6 per session and £10 for taster tokens. Saturday the 11th of January, Farnborough Symphony Orchestra in the Prince's Hall, 2.30pm, £13.50. Tuesday the 21st of January, Ascot Brewing Company Beer Tasting and Talk in the Farnborough Library, 7 pm Eight pounds. Sunday, the twenty-sixth of January, Farnborough Winter Half Marathon and Five K Fun Run. It's at Farnborough Business Park from nine a.m. An entry from fifteen pounds. Tuesday, the twenty-eighth of January, Downton Abbey Princess Hall Cinema, two thirty p.m. and seven thirty p.m. Eight pounds. And Friday the 31st of January, Daliso Chaponda at the West End Centre, 8pm, from £15. And then on Wednesday the 5th of February, Animals and Friends, Music, West End Centre at 8pm, from £25. Friday the 7th of February, Sam Avery, Toddler Geddon, a comedy, West End Centre, 8pm, from £18. Friday the 7th of February, Lipstick on Your Collar, Prince's Hall, 7.30pm, £23. Wednesday the 12th of February, Josie Long, Tender, a comedy, West End Centre, 8pm, from £16. Wednesday the 12th of February, Milton Jones, a comedy, the Prince's Hall, 7.30pm, for £29.50. On Thursday the 27th of February, Ahir Shah, Dots, a comedy, West End Centre, 8pm, from £12. On Friday the 28th of February, J.D. Adams, The Ballad of Kylie Jenner's Old Face, a comedy, West End Centre, 8pm, from £12. Tuesday the 3rd of March, Ben Fogel at the Prince's Hall, 7.30pm, £29.50. Friday the 6th of March, the Mayor of Rushmore's Charity Ball in the Prince's Hall, from 7pm until late, from £50 per person. Sunday the 8th of March, Friends, the musical parody, Prince's Hall, 7pm, £32. 
Friday the 13th of March, Menopause, The Musical, 2, at the Prince's Hall, 7.30pm, £32. Also on Friday the 13th of March, Sophie Hagen, The Bum Swing, a comedy, at the West End Centre, 8pm, from £15. And here are all the box office contact details. For the Farnborough Library and Learning Centre, uh, it's library at hence.gov.uk or telephone 01252 516 458. For the Aldershot Library and Learning Centre, it's aldershot.library at hence.gov.uk or 01252 322 560. For the Prince's Hall, it's www.princeshall.com or 01252 329 And the West End Centre is www westendcentre.co.uk or telephone 01252 330040 Help bring the spirit of Christmas to a young person at risk of homelessness this year by supporting Step by Step's Open Door Christmas Appeal. This year the Aldershot-based charity expects to open its doors to nearly 300 vulnerable young people over the Christmas holidays, more than ever before. Its annual Open Doors Appeal is a way for residents, community groups and local businesses to support this work by raising money to make sure that these young people have a safe and supported place to stay at what can be a difficult time of the year. Christmas is a hard time for the young people who stay with us, said Debbie Morton, head of Young People's Services at Step by Step. It's a reminder of families they can't be a part of, whether through conflict, addiction or abuse. Open Doors allows us to give young people a safe place to stay and the closest thing they can have to a family Christmas. A donation of £30 allows step by step to open its doors to a young person for a day. If you would like to support the Open Doors Appeal, please visit www.stepbystep.org.uk forward slash open doors. Step by Step believes that every young person deserves a safe place to live and the chance of a bright future. The charity helps young people break the cycle of homelessness through accommodation, mental health support and personal development opportunities. For more information about Step by Step, visit www.stepbystep.org.uk we are honoured to have received a prestigious silver award from the Ministry of Defence Employer Recognition Scheme for our commitment to those who serve, or who have served, in the armed forces and their families. Councillor David Clifford, our council leader, said, Rushmore has strong military connections and we're delighted to receive this award. We are proud that Aldershot is the historic home of the British Army and that we have a number of military family members working at the council. Among the things we do to support employees are flexible working options for staff whose partners are in the armed forces, extra leave for reservists to help them attend training and advertising our job vacancies to service leaders. We also have a military buddy scheme to support employees whose partners are service personnel and a group of staff meets regularly to share experiences. The council also supports a number of events including military parades and celebration for Armed Forces Day. 
To find out more, visit www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash armed forces covenant. And that again is all one word. Keen photographers have excelled themselves in their quest to take a winning photo for inclusion in this year's Aldershot and Farnborough charity calendars. Our panel of judges had the tough job of choosing just 12 iconic images for each calendar from more than 200 entries. We think they've done a great job in selecting photos which will serve as an all-year-round visual reminder of what that is that's special in our borough. The calendars include some stunning images that represent Aldershot and Farnborough at its best. You can expect to see superb images of the brand new Parachute Regiment and Airborne Forces statue in Prince's Gardens, Brickfields Country Park, Farnborough Airport Terminal and the Fast Museum, uh, the A4 calendars are a handy size for posting, and we know that every year many are bought as gifts and sent to former residents who now live in other parts of the UK or abroad. The calendars cost £5 each. Proceeds will go to the Mayor's Charities, which are the Mental Health Charity Mind, Community Matters Partnership Project, Parents Action Group, which works with families of children with special needs, and the Ripple Pond, which is a self-help support network for the adult family members of physically or emotionally injured service personnel and veterans. And you can buy the calendars from the council offices in Farnborough, the Prince's Hall and other shops. But to buy online and for full details of stockists, visit www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash calendar competition. Free coffee tasting with an ethical flavour. If you like your coffee served with an ethical flavour, then make a date in your diary for Thursday the 23rd of January when we will be hosting a free fair trade coffee event at the council offices. Organised by the Rushmore Fair Trade Steering Group, the event starts at 6pm at the council offices and will feature the film The Coffee Trail, which uncovers the story behind coffee production in Vietnam, currently the UK's biggest supplier. Afterwards, Aldershot company Karuna Coffee will be hosting a coffee tasting. Like all fair trade products, the coffee is sourced ethically and farmers receive a fair price for the crop. Donations for samples of coffee and fair trade food are welcome and will go to the Mayor of Rushmore's charities. If you would like to attend the event, please email fairtrade at rushmore.gov.uk or call 01252 398 826. The steering group is currently looking for new members to help promote fair trade across Rushmore. For more information, please contact. To find out more, visit www.rushmore.gov.uk forward slash fair trade. A new centre for health set for summer opening. It's full steam ahead on work to provide the new Farnborough Centre for Health at Apollo Rise in Southwood. A construction team is now in place to begin work on the refurbishment to transform the building into a dedicated health facility due to open in the summer of 2020. The new Centre for Health will be, be home to the Voyager Family Health GP practice Farnborough Integrated Care Team, the Community Midwifery Hub, Talk Plus, Talking Therapy, and Voluntary Services. Other services may also be available once the centre is up and running. The NHS North East Hampshire and Farnham Clinical Commissioning Group, which is providing the new centre, 
says that residents will benefit from high quality care in a purpose designed building which has improved facilities including a lift and a hoist for people with mobility impairment as well as parent and child changing and feeding rooms. One of the things that came out of the commissioning group's early engagement with patients and the wider community was that local people want to see improved public transport to the building. So it's working with a number of local organisations, including the council, to look at providing a new community bus that will serve Farnborough and Fleet. And you'll have the chance to comment on the proposals in the coming month. And you can find out more at www northeastshampshireandfarnhamccg.nhs.uk select key projects from the get involved tab and i think that is the longest uh, one word email address we've had <laughs> yes i think it probably is and now i'd just like to briefly mention the there are three regular advertisers in the magazine, there's one on conservatory roofs, which says there are many reasons to change your conservatory roof with Green Space UK. And for a free quote, you call 0800 6525157. There's the um, Army Golf Club, um, which um, all inquiries to 01252 337 272. And the Residential Home and Day Centre, Devereux House, um, for information on that, you can contact for further details on 01252 512 967. Now in its fourth year, the Farnborough Winter Half Marathon has sold out every time, so make sure you sign up before it's too late. Sunday the 26th of January is the big day, but don't worry if a half marathon seems too daunting, because there is something for everyone. The event which starts and finishes under the iconic airship hangar in Farnborough Business Park also has a 5k run and a free children's 800 metre fun run on a safe closed circuit. Entirely traffic free, the half marathon is not only the first major half marathon of the year, it is also one of the flattest, fastest routes in the south. The 5K is open to all runners aged 10 or over and the fun run is open to all children under 10. No parental supervision is necessary for either run, but you are welcome to join your children in the fun run or the 5K. For more details and to register, please visit www.farmborahalf.co.uk Two local charities will benefit from the event Step by Step and Phyllis Tuckwell Hospice Care. This Christmas, consider a giving a regular gift to local good causes by supporting the Rushmore Community Lottery. If you're stuck for a Christmas gift idea and would like to give something a bit different, how about a lottery gift voucher? A gift voucher from the Rushmore Community Lottery gives your loved ones the chance to win a cash prize of up to £25,000, while also helping to raise money for good causes across Aldershot and Farnborough. And gift vouchers start from just £5, and include a personal message. And to find out more, visit www.rushmorelottery.co.uk forward slash gift. And that concludes the winter edition of the Rushmore Arena magazine, brought to you by FATN Talking News. Now, if you would like to contact us, and especially if, if you or anyone you know would be interested in receiving a free audio copy of your local newspapers, please call FATN on 01252 719266 or visit our website at www.fatntalkingnews.com.
www.org.uk. And meanwhile, it's goodbye from us, from Mary. Goodbye. From Malcolm. Goodbye. From our engineer, Charles. Goodbye. And from myself, Tony Osteen. Goodbye. <laughs>